When it comes to the earliest civilizations on the soil of Europe, people of Hellas inevitably distinguish themselves with the advanced societies of the Minoan Crete, Mycenaean Greece and the Hellenic city-states that succeeded them. However, to the north, beyond the borders of the Greek mainland, lay territories of numerous peoples with significant societies of their own. Dardania was one of the kingdoms that rose to prominence during the later part of the first millennium BCE, eventually coming to rival the mighty Macedonian kingdom. In this episode, we go through the history of the Dardanians. The area to the north of the Hellenic mainland has been inhabited by various tribes that Greeks called barbarian due to speaking languages which the Hellenes could not understand. Territories beyond Epirus, such as today's Albania, but also further north, were chiefly inhabited by the groups of peoples which the Greeks collectively labeled the Illyroi or Illyrians. The Illyrians themselves consisted of numerous tribes which were mostly related to each other to a degree and spanned across the eastern Adriatic coast, as well as territories further inland. Among those inland territories was the land of the Dardanians. It bordered the coastal Illyrian tribes to the west, Brigis and Paeonians to the south, Trachians to the east and Celts and Dacians to the north and northeast. Ancient writers such as Strabo and Appian clearly labeled Dardanian inhabitants as Illyrians, a view shared by many of the modern scholars. The eastern part of the region, however, exhibits rather Trachian characteristics and is considered to be a part of the so-called Traco-Illyrian contact zone. Although the first written reference to the tribe is dated to the 4th century BCE, Dardanian settlement is believed to have taken place much earlier. Archaeological evidence suggests development of a distinct cultural variation in the period between 11th and 9th century BCE, having previously replaced an earlier prehistoric culture. The following centuries were characterized by the arrival of the Iron Age, where numerous towns and smaller forts were built, such as those at Romaya, Duboc, Busavate, Vlashna and Port Dardania, among others. At the site of Romaya, an important center had emerged, containing Timuli necropolis that was used from the 6th all the way to the 2nd century BCE. Its largest mound was more than 5 meters high and no less than 40 meters in diameter, suggesting a powerful clan or perhaps a dynasty in charge of the settlement. Slowly but surely, contact was made with the Hellenes, initially through trade. Flow of the Greek pottery and weapons made its way through Apollonia and Epidamnos, significantly benefiting the Dardanians, many of whom likely started serving as mercenaries in the foreign lands. By the 4th century BCE, Dardania was developing as the significant polity in the region. At that time, however, the main Illyrian kingdom was that of Bradilis, a powerful ruler believed to be from the Dasareti tribe. Bardilis variously defeated both Epirotes and Macedonians in several battles and wars during his reign. It is believed that Dardanians were among his allies. However, the tide had changed when Philip II ascended to the Macedonian throne and quickly challenged Bardilis's holdings. In the following war, which took place in 458 BCE, 90 years old Bardilis was defeated and killed by Philip who subsequently subdued the surrounding Illyrian tribes. Dardanians seemingly did not openly oppose Philip, and certainly not his son and successor, Alexander the Great. In fact, hegemony of Macedon was not the only thing the Illyrians had to worry about, as another threat was emerging from the north. This new threat were the Celts. Looking for the new lands to settle, the Celtic tribes arrived to the southeastern Europe by the late 4th century and inevitably encountered the Illyrians. Initially, Celts refrained from making any incursions, being wary of the power of the new Macedonian king Alexander, who had just conquered Thracia and was in the process of consolidating his power in the region during 335 BCE. In the following years, 
Alexander would go on to conquer the Persian Empire and enter India in one of the greatest military conquests in history before suddenly dying in 323 BCE. As Alexander's empire was divided between the rival generals that succeeded him, the European territories were left vulnerable and the Celts were ready to strike. The first victim of the Celtic invasions were the Autariatai, one of the most powerful Illyrian tribes and western neighbors of the Dardanians. By 310 BCE, the Dardani themselves became a target of a Celtic expedition. Under warlord named Molistomus, Celts aimed to conquer Dardania as well as the neighboring Tribali and the Paeonians. However, conquering Dardania proved to be much more difficult than the previous Illyrian tribes, and Molistomus was defeated. Celtic invasions were soon resumed, and in 298 BCE they penetrated towards Thracia and even Macedon. They were eventually met by the Macedonian king Cassander and once again decisively defeated. This was not the end of the Celts, who spent the following years building a grand alliance for an even bigger campaign. In 280 BCE, a large Celtic force was assembled in Pannonia, aimed at overrunning Illyria, Thracia and even Greece itself. The great military force, about 85,000 strong, was divided into three armies. Army under Kerethrios was set to move against the Thracians and the Tribali. Second army, led by Brennus and Asihorius, headed towards Paeonia, while the third army under Bolgios aimed to invade Macedon and Illyria. The Dardanian king, whose name is unfortunately lost to history, offered 20,000 soldiers to the newly crowned Macedonian king Ptolemy Keraunos in order to help defeat the Celts. However, Ptolemy refused any help and, not even waiting for the reinforcements, rushed to battle the Celts. This decision was to Ptolemy's demise as he was captured in battle and subsequently killed. The Celts still weren't able to achieve decisive victory until the army under Brennus arrived, after which the Macedonians were defeated and the expedition force marched further into central Greece. They even reached Delphi, which they looted, but were subsequently defeated by the Greek forces of Aetolians, Thessalians and Malians, and ultimately kicked out of the Greek mainland. In 277 BCE, the Celtic forces were decisively defeated at the Battle of Lismachia by Antigonus Gontas, who was declared the new king of Macedonia. Although the Celtic expedition was finally put to end, kingdoms in northern Greece were severely weakened. Dardanians, who were recovering from the invasions themselves, used this opportunity to expand their own influence and counter the Macedonian hegemony. In 239 BCE, Demetrius II assumed the Macedonian throne and went on series of campaigns which cemented his dominant position in central northern Greece. Next up, he was getting ready to subdue the Paeonians and eventually the Dardanians themselves. In 231 BCE, Longarus was crowned the new king of Dardania. One of the first orders of business for the new king was to face the Macedonian threat, and Longarus wasted no time. In the same year, he marched south to Paeonia and captured their capital city of Bilazora before Demetrius was able to do it himself. The pretext was protection of the old allies against an imminent Macedonian expansion. Demetrius responded by preparing for war. At the time, Macedonians were allied with the Illyrian kingdom of Ardii, who were tasked with defeating the newly established Federal Republic in Epirus. In 229 BCE, forces of Longarus and Demetrius clashed in northwestern Macedonia, with the Dardanians emerging victorious. King Demetrius II would die in the following spring, creating an opportunity for Longarus to make further gains in the region. While the queen of Ardii Teuta was dealing with the campaigns in Epirus, Longarus invaded from the north, causing several Illyrian tribes to defect to him. 
This forced Teuta's army to withdraw from Epirus, and together with the commander Scardilaidas marched north to face the Dardanian threat. However, peace was eventually reached between the parties and Longarus returned to Dardania. Teuta then received a Roman delegation which came to address rampant Illyrian piracy, an event which led to murder of a Roman ambassador and caused the Roman-Illyrian War. The result was Roman victory, who managed to establish foothold in Illyria and imposed several restrictions on the Ardii. The Illyrians soon broke the terms under the leadership of Demetrius of Pharos and Scardilaidas, and hostilities with Rome were renewed, ultimately resulting in another Roman victory. Meanwhile, Longarus had his own problems to deal with, as the Macedonian threat was revived under Regent Antigonus III. Antigonus wished to push the Dardanians out of Paeonia and marched against Longarus. In the subsequent battle, the Macedonians were victorious and Longarus had no choice but to withdraw. The Macedonian garrison was installed at Bilazola and the new city Antigonea was founded on the Axis River. Antigonus soon declared himself the king of Macedon and in 226 BCE he was invited by the Achaeans to intervene in Peloponnese against Sparta. While he campaigned in Peloponnese over the course of the next several years, Longarus used the opportunity and invaded Paeonia once again. In 221, the Macedonians defeated Longarus once more, but Antigonus fell ill and died shortly afterwards. He was succeeded by young Philip V, the original successor which Antigonus held the regency for. By 220 BCE, skirmishes between Dardanians and Macedonians took place throughout Paeonia. In 219, Philip departed to Peloponnese for another war against the Spartans and their coalition. Langarus immediately attacked and recaptured Bilazola, but would soon have to face the Macedonians yet again. After defeating the Spartan alliance, Philip returned to Macedon and in 217 BCE marched to Paeonia. Dardanian force was again defeated, and Macedonians once again captured Bilazola and went even further, taking the city of Sinitia from the Dardanians. Ambitious Philip then built a large fleet and turned his sights to Illyria, which he planned to snatch from the Roman influence and even made a treaty with the Carthaginians and the Hannibal, Rome's greatest enemy. These events triggered the First Roman-Macedonian War, which broke out into 14 BCE. Although Macedonians quickly captured northern Pelagonia in 211, the war dragged on and involved several Hellenic alliances, some allied to Macedon and some to Rome. Dardanians were able to use this opportunity and made alliance with Aeropus of Lycestis, who led a force of Dardanians and captured Lychnidas in 208 BCE. As Longarus was allied with the Roman coalition himself, he raided Upper Macedonia and even occupied Orestes, taking 20,000 prisoners. With Philip eventually defeating the Hellenic allies of Rome, he returned and drove Logarus' forces back to Dardania in 206 BCE. In the same year, Longarus passed away, being succeeded by his son, Bato. By 205, the stalemate between Macedon and Rome resulted in signing of a peace treaty, with Macedon reaffirming its dominant position in Greece. However, the peace lasted only five years, and hostilities resumed as soon as Philip started conquering territories throughout Hellas. King Bato predictably aligned himself with Rome, hoping to place Paeonia under the Danian control in the case of victory. This time, Roman allies were numerous and included Illyrians, the Aetolian League, the Achaean League, Pergamon, Rhodes and Athens, among others. While Philip departed to fight the coalition, he left his son Perseus to blockade the pass leading to Pelagonia, but soon afterwards recalled his son to reinforce his army due to initial setbacks. Bato, together with the king of Taulanti, Pleuratus, quickly seized the opportunity and invaded Macedonian territory in 199 BCE. 
However, when the Romans withdrew to Apollonia for the winter, Philip sent General Athenagoras against the Dardanians, who after fierce fighting forced Bato to retreat. However, unlike the First War, Romans and their allies eventually managed to break the power of Macedon and defeated Philip, forcing him to sue for peace in 197 BCE. Macedonians were forced to abandon all their possessions in central Greece, Thracia and Asia. Upon receiving news of Roman victory, Bato once again invaded the Axius Valley, but was defeated by Philip near the Paeonian city of Stobi. The Dardanians were unhappy by the fact that they received nothing despite being allied with the Roman coalition, in contrast to Ardii who did receive lands bordering Macedonia. With his power greatly diminished, Philip found it difficult to defeat Dardanians decisively. Instead, he proposed a deal to a large tribal confederation called the Bastarnai, which lived beyond the river Danube, far to the north. Macedonian proposal was for the Bastarnai to settle in Dardania, thus destroying Dardanians in the process, from which they would be free to invade the Illyrians along the Adriatic coast and eventually Italy. Philip V died in 179 BCE and was succeeded by his son Perseus. Bato himself passed away in 176, being succeeded by his brother Monunius. In accordance to his father's plans, Perseus conducted mass deportations from Paeonia and resettled it with the barbarians, counting on their loyalty in the time of war. Under the leadership of Clondicus, the Bastarnine moved in and started preparations to invade Dardania. Monunius applied to Rome for help, with the Thessalian representatives confirming Perseus' alliance with the Bastarnine. The Roman Senate, however, did nothing, and Perseus himself promptly denied having anything to do with the barbarian activity. The Bastarnai began their invasion of Dardania, supported by the Thracians and the Scordisci. Monunius mobilized all of his forces and decided to encamp in a border town relatively close to the camp of the invaders. As the early winter came, and the Bastarnai's allies decided to return home for a time, Monunius split his army in two, with one part attacking the enemy directly, while another one using hidden roads in order to attack the Bastarnai from the rear. The Bastarnai, numbering 30,000 soldiers, were able to defeat the frontal Dardanian assault and force their retreat into the city, which the barbarians subsequently surrounded. However, the second Dardanian army soon emerged from behind the undefended Bastarnai camp, which they took without any resistance. With their logistics and supplies lost, Bastarnai were forced to withdraw under harsh winter conditions, never to return. Perseus himself would continue to push the expansionist policy aimed at restoring the glory of Macedon and suppressing Roman influence in Greece. This led to the Third Roman-Macedonian War, which started in 171 BCE. In 169, Monunius engaged his daughter Atuta to the Ardean ruler Gentius in hope to secure an alliance. However, the Ardei allied themselves with Perseus instead, who managed to conquer several Dardanian cities, including Uscana, Oeni and Draudacos. However, Perseus was ultimately defeated by Rome in 168, and the Macedonian kingdom was finally subdued by the Romans. Following the collapse of Macedon, the Dardanians asked Rome to be granted control of Paeonia. Unfortunately for Monunius, Roman consul Lucius Aemilius Paulus refused and only permitted Dardanian trade in salt in Paeonia, a giant slap to the face. Dardanians were now reduced to somewhat of a client state under the Roman hegemony. By the 1st century BCE, the appearance of a new Roman narrative looked to assign legendary lineage to the Romans, tracing it to the Trojan War. 
newly created mythology held that Romans were successors of the defeated exiles of the Trojan War, who under the leadership of Aeneas eventually settled in Italy. Aeneas was from the tribe of the Trojan Dardanoi, who lived in the city of Dardanus near Ilion in Asia Minor, and were related to the Trojans. On the other hand, Romans also wanted to avoid such connection with Illyrian Dardanians, who they perceived as a barbaric tribe. As a result of this, they started using the term Moesi to describe the Dardanians, especially as their conflicts with Rome increased. In 97 BCE, Dardanians were defeated by a Roman army from Macedon, and then again in 88 BCE, as they attempted to invade the province. After 76 BCE, Gaius Carbonius Curio was assigned Macedonia for his proconsular command after serving his time as Roman consul. Curio was credited with finally defeating Dardani and Moesi, for which the Senate granted him a triumph in Rome. The final subjugation of Dardania and its incorporation in the provincial system was likely completed during the reign of Octavian Augustus, who became the first Roman emperor in 27 BCE, the same year he reconstructed the provinces across the empire. Between years 6 and 9 CE, the Illyrian tribes would revolt against Rome for one last time, only to be inevitably defeated by Roman legions under Tiberius, the designated successor of Augustus, and soon to be the new imperator of Rome.